So thank you, Graziano. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Alex, here. Um, it's very nice to be here. Um, it's actually, uh, it's, it's wonderful to see Alex here up and running and functioning so well. Um, I, I was one of the participants in the very first ever meeting that took place in Brussels to discuss the S3 projects, including Alex here. And of course, was, was in the early stages before, to my great relief, Janet Thornton took over the role, uh, one of the people who led early discussions about what Alex here could do and how it could be structured and why it was so necessary. And so it's, it's really fantastic to see uh, Alex here in operation and to see so many people here. And I know that it's been very successful in many different parts of Europe. Um, and obviously, I, I know some of you well, but many of the people who have been speaking and who I've, I've seen today are new to me, so it's very nice also to see new people. Um, I'm, I'm here to introduce you to a new initiative, uh, as Graziano said, uh, called Human Technopole. This is an initiative that was uh, essentially conceived uh, roughly around 2014, 2015 originally, and then developed into a concrete plan starting in 2015-2016. Um, I should say that the, the plan was um, not developed within the, the research ministries or the science ministries or the health ministries. Uh, the plan was developed because Milan was hosting the Expo in 2016. And there was a very large site which was developed in order to host the expo. Um, you know, it's like a, a small town, the, the, the site. It's, it's very large. Um, and it, the, 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 the government, both the local, the city, and the central government, were very aware that when you develop a large project like this, that you need to have a plan for how this project will go forward in the future. Um, and the way that the, the government at that time, working together with the regional Lombardy government and the Milan government, decided to do this was to try to create a large innovation park. And in order to, to have an anchor for the innovation park, they attracted three organizations onto the site, which are in the area of science, research, and biomedicine. And these three anchors are the science faculties of the University of Milan, the Statale University of Milan, who will move on to the site. The, there is a hospital which is in construction, the Galeazzi Hospital, uh, which is part of the same um, consortium of hospitals that hospitals like San Rafaela, that many of you will know well, belong to, uh, which is, is actually bu being built extremely quickly at this point on the site. And the third was an initiative called Human Technopole, which was an, an initiative, as Graziano outlined, to set up a research center focused on human biology, if you like it, to say it very simply. Um, in order to have a core of biomedical research on this site, to act as an attractor for other initiatives, particularly initiatives in the private sector, the industry sector, to come onto the site to help create an innovation park. And we heard already uh, about the innovation park in Trieste, or the two innovation parks in Trieste. And these parks obviously are an opportunity in which academia and industry can develop things together 
academia and the medical world can do things together and industry and all of those partners can do things together. So that's, that's what human technopole is. Um, we are at the very beginning. I, I was recruited last year and started uh, in Milan in 2019. Um, you will, I'll, I'll go through what we're in the process of doing. Um, but first, just to say that the idea is to promote human health and well-being. That's the overriding goal of the project as conceived. Again, I, I emphasize that the project was conceived by people who are no longer at all involved in the project. So the project was conceived in a broad <laughs> sense. It actually was a detailed project because it was a project on the basis of which the government passed a law making the foundation which, which is the human technical. Um, but those people, it was decided, would not be part of implementing the project. And so the people who are implementing the project, including myself, and the president of the organization, an economist called Marco Simone, uh, were not involved in the initial development. So we had to start, or I had to start, by choosing how to get off the ground, how to begin, what would we do to begin with. And I want to give you an outline of, of what these initial choices are and what the proposals are for the future development of human technical. I think it's, you know, it's obvious to this audience, and it's very obvious to, to many people, that if you want to make a contribution at this point in time, to human health and well-being, that you have to invest in genomics and in computational biology. It's, it's, it's the most important area of development across the life sciences. And in particular, because it's so difficult to do wet lab experiments on people, it's particularly important to make use of these possibilities when it comes to human biology. So we will focus on a number of areas working in as interdisciplinary way as possible to contribute to the development of personalized or stratified care. The plan was an ambitious one, as Graziano outlined. Uh, the plan is to hire roughly 1,000 scientists plus the necessary support and administrative staff. So this, for those of you who, who, who want a comparison, is pretty much the same size as the Crick Institute, which is, the, the, I think, the single, the biggest single site research institution in Europe at this point, um, at least research institution that is not a university. Um, so it's in that same kind of scale. That means it has to have a large floor area. That won't surprise you, I will go through that. And the plan is to make this competitive on a world scale, and therefore it needs to have state-of-the-art facilities. But, and this is something which I introduced to the plan coming from EMBO, where I think this works very well. The plan is not to build a closed institution, but instead to build an institution that's open and that does as much as possible with the community. Now, EMBO is an, an international organization and does this on a European scale. We obviously will also do things on an international scale. But I think, obviously, we will, will be much more focused on the national system and on interacting with the components of and the players in the national system. And among, you know, among those, it's not just academia, obviously, that the plan is to work together with industry. So the, the initial choices um, that 
I decided to focus on for the very first calls for researchers were based on mainly these considerations. So genomics and neurogenomics, essentially broadly based analyses of important aspects of biology focusing mostly on humans. If you're going to do genomics, you need very strong computational science, bioinformatics, statistics, analytical methods of all sorts, machine learning, artificial intelligence, perhaps. Um, but you need to have very strong computational support because you will be generating a lot of data and computation is the way in which we get information from data. There is an, another aspect of data science which was part of the original plan and which I think is, is, a, is a, a very uh, interesting area to follow up and so we are following up on this by trying to hire experts in the area. This is to use the same methods of data science to look at healthcare data and data from the health system, including health economics, uh, and to try to use this information actually very much in the same way as some of the speakers discussed this morning uh, are doing in order to provide not information directly to patients, but to, to provide information which is relevant to health policy, um, and particularly, eventually, health economic policy. <coughs> and so this is a project, as it was originally conceived as a collaboration with the Polytechnical, who has obviously a large cohort of very good data scientists. Um, and so this is being pursued at the moment. Uh, with contributions and in collaboration with people from the Polytechnic. The, the final uh, area which I decided to focus on initially is perhaps more surprising, and that's structural biology. And so the, the, this, the rationale for this is, at least to me, a complete no-brainer. Um, but it's a, it's a different rationale. So one of the things, as I said, we want to be is to be open to the community. And one way to be open to the community is to create user facilities. So I, you know, in terms of user numbers, Emble EBI is one of the biggest user facilities in the world. Uh, and one of the most broadly based user facilities in the world, but the users don't actually come. But obviously, <laughs> infrastructures that require technologies for doing experiments do require users to come. And so, cryoelectron microscopy, as many of you are aware, has undergone a revolution in the last seven or eight years, which led to three people who were involved in the initial development of the methods which made this possible to receiving the Nobel Prize at the end of 2017. Um, this development makes structural biology for many problems more accessible than it was. And one of the, the surprises that I had on my first visit to Italy to discuss human technical, I met people from the, the, the University of Milan. Uh, and I discovered that there, are, there, there was actually one really high-end cryo-EM available to the academic community in Italy. And in Embol, where I came from, there were three of the top-end actually better microscopes than the one that was in the Statale at the time, available. And they're in use 24-7, both by internal people and external people. And the demand is in, for their use is enormous. 
And so I thought this, this is an obvious thing to do that would help to satisfy the requirements of the user community. Now, we want to do this together with other providers of EM, and particularly other providers of access to EM, like the university, and Eurobioimaging, which will have a cryo-EM user facility. But at least from my experience, I have no doubt at all that the, the demand for this service will be very large and that there will be no issue of overcapacity for a long time in the provision of cryo-EM user access. Uh, second, the genomics facility will have some capacity for external users. And thirdly, that there is, this is also something which Alex here is heavily involved in, but the, 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 the need because of regulations on patient data to have nationals nodes where medical informatic and bioinformatic data can be accessed and used without the transfer of patient data or the loss of privacy for patient data. And this potentially human technical could, set, could be such a node in Italy for this kind of data. This is something that I've been discussing with many people over the course of this year. So that is, if you like, the overriding dream. What's the reality? So the reality is we have a very nice building, Palazzo Italia, which was the Italian pavilion for the expo. Many of you have seen it. When I, when I first visited it towards the end of last year, one entire floor um, was, was a black hole. And another floor was completely covered, roof, ceiling, floor, with mirrors. So it needed to be quite dramatically uh, refurbished before being useful as, as a building. This is not a building that will ever be a laboratory building, a wet lab building. This is a building for offices, for administration, for computational work, for which it's very well suited. Um, but it is now essentially completed. There are a few things that still need to be done externally to the building, but it's now essentially completed. The, we have started to build a data center. The data center is a modular structure, and the first module is in place and will be populated. Five minutes, my god, I haven't even started yet. <laughs> Anyway, I noticed this is the first, you know, that there was one, one very nice thing about this group. This is the first time I've ever been to a meeting in Italy, and practically the first time I've ever been to a meeting anywhere where my talk started earlier than it said it would in the program. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll be fast. So basically, we have to, we are refurbishing two of the expo pavilions in, into laboratories. These can be converted into laboratories. And that is underway and will be finished, hopefully, uh, in this case, by the end of next year, and in this case, early in 2021. Um, in order to create capacity for laboratory work, we will install prefabricated labs in the area around the, the Tree of Life, for those of you who know the site. And again, those should be ready uh, by the end of next year. So by the end of next year, we should have space for something like um, 250 or so wet lab researchers. And there, there's <coughs> lots of space in Palazzo Italia for computational researchers. So the, by that time, we should really be able to build up to something uh, that is functional. And then in the, at the same time and in parallel, there is a competition for the design of a new laboratory building, which will be a large wet lab building, uh, which would have space for many facilities and for roughly 800 people. 
So in parallel, we've been hiring people. The, the recruitment went extremely well. Uh, seven people have signed up to date. An eighth person we're still negotiating with, and I'm hopeful uh, that she will also sign up in the near future. Um, of those, uh, four are of Italian origin, uh, but have only one of them, Giuseppe Testa, who many of you will know, uh, has worked in Italy. The others have worked in Japan, in the UK, in Germany, etc. And three are non-Italian. And in spite of looking and sounding incredibly Italian, Alessandro is actually English. I was, I was amused to learn. I only learned that about three weeks ago, the fact that he was actually Italian. Anyway, we have been able to recruit people who I'm very happy with. And uh, since I spent such a long time on in the introduction, I'm going to just summarize here a lot of things. We, we want really to do this in a collaborative and an open way. And that means collaborative with the, the research community, with universities, with research organizations, with CMR, with institutes, etc. We want to develop with them and with clinical researchers biomedical data resources. We want to work together with those doing research, building cohorts, and working with patients within the health system. We've already started talking to a couple of cohorts. It was already mentioned today that, that Italy has quite a diverse population structure and local populations which have, um, have quite distinct genetic structures. And we are working together with a couple of those planning for the future uh, that we might be able to add to the very good cohort data that is already collected, genomic data, which so far has not been available and is not, has not been affordable as part of these cohorts. So we're working, for example, in these areas. And we've been talking to the, the ERCs for the Italians in the room. It's obvious what these are. These are the, the research-intensive hospitals uh, across Italy. And discussing the framework of these. And we've been talking a lot uh, with representatives of industry, including uh, Asol sorry, now I forget what it's called. Um, including two of the Alisai and what was the second one? Asobiotech, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to say Akasa Lombardia, which is also another, but it's a different thing. Uh, and we've been talking to them about various things. We've also been talking about to individual companies. We'd, obviously, Human Technopol will be engaged in technology transfer for things that are done in uh, Human Technopol. It was also mentioned uh, by uh, the Lorenzo from Asso Biotech that there is a need for education in technology transfer, and this is something that we would also try to contribute to. Um, and there are many different forms of collaboration with industry. Uh, IMI was, was another of the presentations that were, were, were held here. There are public-private partnerships of all sorts, uh, open targets, which involves the Sanger Institute and the five pharmaceutical companies. It's a very good example of a private-public par uh, partnership in the area in which we're all interested, uh, which works extremely well and provides a lot of data which is openly accessible and pre-competitive. So we'd like to work with many people going forward. Uh, and thank you very much again for the invitation and enjoy your lunch.